I'd like to welcome uh, Svante Liechtenstein in Düsseldorf and Thomas Fenker in Cologne. Hi, guys. Thanks. Hi, Achim. Hello. Thanks. It's nice that you took the time to be here with us this evening and, and chat a little bit about your work, about your input in the music festival. Um, and I would like, before we start, I would like to introduce you a little bit to the, to the guys uh, watching us, to the people watching us. I'd like to start with you, Svante. Uh, you're an artist, a poet, sound artist, uh, but also a teacher, professor. You have a, a, a professorship in Düsseldorf for aesthetic practices. And your main interest, I read, is transtextual performative amplification of language, sound, and theory. Very interesting description of, of, of a work. And I would like uh, to ask, if, you, if I consider these terms and, and this sentence, w could you describe your work as a curator also as part of your artistic practice? Or is this something else? Um. I'm really happy to be here. Uh, to be here first at all. Thank you for inviting us. Uh, um, it's a difficult question because it 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 uh, it immediately questioning the position of an artistic approach and a curatorial approach and a theoretical approach. Um, and I, 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 if I would uh, trying to answer this, it would probably take too much time. Uh, so I would prefer to answer with a short and brief yes. I, I consider everything uh, in a way as part of, of, of an artistic approach to things and thinking. So the curatorial work is also part of it. How, how, how could it be something else? Yeah, well, that's a perfect answer, actually. I, I'm very happy with that. It makes perfect sense for me. Uh, because all those borders between this is art, this is something else, this is this, are kind of artificial borders, the same as we exp uh, as we feel the borders between the music genres are um, are uh, kind of uh, how how to say superficial or not not really uh, interesting. Um, we we will come back to that later because I think this is a very interesting uh, question also for me. How how does this work as as an artist? But first, I'd like to uh, also introduce Thomas. It's kind of difficult, Thomas. I would not uh, uh, to introduce you as a music journalist is kind of too short because there are so much more things I, I know from from what you do. But still, this is this is what what they say. You run this this uh, online magazine Kaput in Cologne together with Linus Volkmann. You have been working for a big number of music uh, journals, and uh, like for for you from your perspective, being invited to to do this curatorial work for this special festival, what was the thing that made you attract? What was attracting for you to to accept this offer? I mean, the interesting thing about the offer was that I knew I can bring in artists which are maybe challenging or for sure challenging in other festival contexts and work with them on a, in a long format um, time perspective. So not only having them like for like a certain booking, like one performance, rather than developing ideas of several performances also between collaborations between each other. This is so rare that you have like an opportunity like that because most people, most contexts, festivals I know, they just book people and they do what they are doing in that season and that's it. So I was really keen on that part of it. So, so that's already going a little bit back to what I what we talked, Swantje, before about the artistic approach. So, what you do as a curator is much more than picking names and proposing artists, right? It's much, much more of a um, inhaltlich. What's that word in English? Of of a context uh, working in, in, in a content based. Thanks, yeah, content based work, much more than just booking a band or something, right? That's for both of you, actually. <laughs> Yeah, I understand it that way that we try to find a narrative which is fitting for Monheim Triennale as much as for the artist. Some artists prefer to have exactly what they have already in mind with other projects, but still bring in several different projects and make a bigger narrative by that. And others are totally open for the idea of, okay, let's start blank here. Let's see who else is coming in. What can I do? What What is this offering me because this is also for the artist such a rare thing they have an open field pretty much and they are they are wanted as somebody who can give so much so let's try things out we have time let's do it 
Yeah, sure. It's so, so what we already hear, but m maybe not everybody knows, is that when we invite artists, we don't uh, tell them to what they have to do, but we invite them um, to present different shapes of their works. So uh, you have to communicate that with the, with artists too, which also for them is not not something they have every day, right? To to tell somebody, well, we would like to invite you to the festival, but you have to come up with an idea what you want to do. I, I think it's that's that's probably something which is also um, I, I think that's the the, the most exciting challenge uh, uh, that 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 the artists and the curator are able to uh, really cross borders and find new non-binary solutions. I mean, since you quoted the transtextual, I think. It's also like the festival itself, it's kind of a transcultural idea behind it. So the trans means it's including, it's, it's not binary, it's not a, a classical or a pop music festival. It's not uh, based on a, on a simple one or zero solution. It's really trying to find new ways and processing new ways and, sh and, and leaving us as curators the same freedom as than the artists. And this is something really special. I mean, I think the whole process of inviting different people, I mean, also inviting a person like me uh, who is not, uh, who is, is always something in between the arts and the theory and arts and academics and, and arts or literature, or then it's more performative. Oh no, no, it's more sound based. It's, it's, um, I really like that this is something which is in between and, and it's also possible to find new ways of presenting music to create music in the places where they happen and not just bring the product. It's like the idea of a more human-based uh, festival and not product-based. It's not already, already. Uh, it's not, it's, it's not there. It's, it's happening. Um, it, uh, it, there is a process. So it's even the situation that there is one more year to go now it seems more, I mean, all the ideas you came up with or the, the streaming ideas shows that there is, the approach is so different that it's, it's possible to, to immediately create new ideas and, and keep on being in the process of the festival. So it's not the festival at the end and then people bring products there and consume the products. It's also something that we all create together. And it, this is really special. Yeah, that makes perfect sense. Also, I thought when I read the transtextual and I was thinking a little bit about this, I was actually ex exactly thinking that makes perfect sense for me in this context. Thomas, uh, would you say that this this let's use this word transtextual for now? We know what we what we want to want to um, describe with that. Would you say that this is a contemporary aspect? This is what makes this thing contemporary. What is something that is relevant today? Well, it's definitely something which is relevant, but I think what makes the festival also contemporary are the artists working with that, because it's their daily work and all of them bring in different aspects of that. And and that's what I'm also interested in, is to see how people from different cultural backgrounds and also already in the process when we curators were discussing the, the list for the festival, I think it was around 300 artists, right, Swante? We had on the long list, like everybody gave in input. And I remember this weekend, I made myself a list with YouTube links and SoundCloud links, and I listened to all 300 the whole weekend. I just spent on listening all this music, and I was amazed how, and I listened to a lot of music, and I've, I know stuff, but there was so much I didn't know. And all that was also coming in and bringing in the texture for that festival. And then filtering out the artists you say okay these are our 16 artists we we go deeper with like like it's fascinating because they all work with stuff like that and you could have done five more festivals but i think that this mix will bring up something magic when they come together in that week i, I remember perfectly I, I didn't listen to all 300 but i listened to a lot i didn't count actually but then now when we when we look at the 16 it seems perfect it could have been different too but uh, is it possible in a way to define these connection lines between somebody like Jennifer Walsh and somebody like Greg Fox? 
somebody like Jiha Park on the one hand and uh, I don't know, uh, Robert Landfermann on the other. So it's so difficult. I mean, now for me, listening a lot to music and to this music especially, it, it makes sense now, but is it, can we kind of put a finger on it? What, what is it what, that makes the connection between these people? Aesthetically or I don't know? I mean, if it would be so easy to bring it just to one or two points, it would be again, uh, I think, didn't get the whole complexity. But maybe, I mean, I think we are all agreed immediately. Um, yeah, that really fits together. It's a really good program. It's not something that everybody has something in common. And there are probably different words that we could name it. Like there is... Um, uh, 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 a specific uh, uh, contemporary approach or there is a complexity, there is this transgression between the genres. There is also, I think, the, the openness to different kinds of artists and collaborators. I mean, I think that's also something that they all have in common, that, that that they all work together with uh, different uh, groups of, of, of musicians and also sometimes different arts, so that, they, that there is a combination of installation and music or performance and music or like Jennifer Walsh and, and um, Philip Zollman with more room uh, or um, uh, a, a space-specific art. And I think this is that you could name it, but then on the other side, it's also interesting that there is like I think I really like the word magic. Uh, Thomas just used for it. It's kind of also magical in a way that it's not fully to explain, but it's it's for all of us. It would I think there was no fight or something. It was it was quite 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 everybody was quite uh, uh, sure that that's a good uh, selection and that it, they all go really well together and there is a wide range still uh, of, of different kind of approaches yeah cool i mean uh, thomas yes please i mean one of the axioms for our work was that we are looking for artists we believe are there for the years to come who have like a long-term perspective so on one side we wanted people who have a clear defined art space already for themselves but we're also looking for people who are curious and i feel with everybody on that list there's this curiosity what's happening behind that wall what's happening around that corner and then they are stubborn enough to maybe don't let everything in we want to have with them but they are curious enough to let other things in and and all that is feelable for me when i look at that list that there's defined artists but ones which are not afraid of going for risks also yeah, so maybe it's all for all of us, for you as curator, for me as an artist working with the festival, and for the people we invite, it's like an adventure. Let, let's uh, Maybe before we chat a little more, I would just like to bring in a little uh, video clip from one of the artists. Uh, one, uh, you are working with Thomas, and this is Philip Zollmann, who is talking in this video about what he's planning to do for the festival, maybe also next year. This, of course, was uh, still uh, thinking that the festival would happen in 2020. Die vielen Dinge, die wir noch so haben, die jetzt zum Beispiel gar nicht mehr reingepasst hätten in die Kunstwerke, werden wir da mit auch viel mehr Zeit ähm, installieren können. Und, und dann vor allem, was wichtig ist, ist, ist meistens das Problem, dass keine Zeit und keine Ruhe ist, um dieses Stimmungssystem, was, wir, was sehr zentral ist für uns, ähm, in Ruhe zu entwickeln und auf, vor allem auf den Raum hin. Also ich war schon da und ich kenne den Ort jetzt schon seit über einem halben Jahr und er ist immer so bei mir und ich denke viel darüber nach, wie, wie der zu unserem Ort werden kann mit, mit unseren spezifischen Ideen und das ist ganz schön. Wir, wir, wir freuen uns da sehr drauf, muss ich sagen. Das, ist ein, das wird ein großer Schritt. Also nicht nur von der Größe des Instruments, aber so von der ähm, Intensität für uns und der Klarheit. Yeah, so this was Philip Zollmann talking a little bit about an installation he was planning to do. I don't know if he's still going to do it next year, of course not, because the room is not going to be there. But still, um, uh, maybe um, uh, an, an impression of what he's thinking. And Thomas, it seems like he was uh, it was easy to, to uh, pr um, transport the idea to him, so he could easily understand what we are asking. 
here's an open space, do something with it. Yeah, I, I, I saw him doing this modular organ system in a in a shorter version in um, at the festival Mia Kusma, and I, I was fascinated about the idea of them, like him and Konrad Sprenger, building this organ system. So so this was the starting point. But but also from from the first second on, we were sure we wanted to include like his project with uh, Johann Gutler gegen die Zeit. So these are these two points, and the thing with Philip is that was. I was talking about curiosity. He's one of these people who you can feel he is never it, it's never in enough to just play within like the, the cornerstones of what he already knows. He he wants to explore new stuff. He he's artistically searching. Because some some of you maybe know him as Afterman to uh, a well uh, booked and uh, playing out uh, techno DJ. So he could have sit on that for forever ever, but he was always challenging himself to go into also the Klankos electronic experimental music. He did like this big uh, monophony project, which uh, premiered at the Ruhrtriennale two years ago. And so for him, obviously, the the offer of Monheim Triennale was something very great because the open field is exactly what somebody like him is searching and uh, easily able to fill. Yeah, it seems like curiosity could be like a key word for, for us because I think also as a listener you need cu curiosity to, to explore all these different sounds. Um, Svante, you've, you've been inviting uh, artists not only from America or uh, Germany or Europe or whatever, but from abroad, from, from places where we, d we don't look usually every day. And uh, there has been probably also... Um, a, a strange thing, or not strange, but an uh, um, um, issue with the communication with people. Before we we'd go a little more into this, I would also like to introduce one of the artists you um, introduced or you brought into the program, which I like very much. And we can we have uh, prepared a little video also for this by Jiha Park, who's from Seoul, um, Korea. And I don't cannot pronounce the instrument. You, you, you practice that? How is that instrument called she's playing? The Sang Wang. Okay. I'm sure it's not proper, but uh, I, I try. It, it'll do. Let's hear that. Let's hear that. It's a mouth pipe. It's also an organ in a way. So it's yeah. connected to Philip Solomon. Yeah, I think w once we heard it, we, 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 people will know what we're talking about. Here's yeah. Park Jiha.
Yeah, Jiha Park. Uh, we always say Park Jiha, but actually it's Jiha Park. So obviously, um, um, I'm out of the picture. Ob obviously, uh, Jiha is um, referring to her own tradition, to the Gupak music in Korea. And when you c communicate with her, Swanje, is was that difficult for for her to understand what we are asking from from her as a contribution to our festival? Mm, I think. My my um, uh, that I proposed her name was also that I um, my selection or my my um, the artists that I, I I mentioned for or, or selected for the festival also I was I was very much concerned as well about intersectional uh, ideas I mean the idea that a lot of festivals also still stick, even if they are uh, open and um, transcultural, they stick to a, a quite Western tradition of music or a white colonial uh, tradition of music. If it comes to the instrument, the harmony system, the music in general. So I was also looking out for for people who were who are also using different uh, music um, traditions in their work and knowing both traditions, but I think uh, from a uh, Western side, it's 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 quite strange that still, I mean, all over the world, people, if they learn piano, they, they know about Mozart and Bach, but I mean, a lot of people who study music here, and I'm also teaching at the Music Academy, it's like they don't know nothing about Eastern music tradition in general, because it's not part of our music education. So, and I think... If it comes to, to communication and also trying to explain these ideas from a Western side, it's also, it's always, I mean, including that, that we are inviting her to a European festival and uh, normally people in Europe don't know so much and then there is, they, people get invited because it's a, I don't know, musica globalista or somehow exotic uh, part of, of, of or a specific Eastern or Asian music um, festival. So I think I, I can understand that, uh, especially if then on the other side, I'm my Korean is like zero. I don't speak any Asian language, unfortunately. I understand some Hindi and Bangla, but... Um, that's only because I worked in a radio station and did uh, like editing for uh, for um, a South Asia program, um, but but I don't. So it's it's like uh, if it comes to communication, it just immediately makes transparent what the problem is. So I'm really happy that that we got to invite her and that she also brings her music and this beautiful, really heavy and uh, interesting um, instrument, and that she also wants to put part of a, um, a collection of mouthpieces that she collected through through years uh, in, an, in a little exhibition. So I, I'm really interested in, in what she's going to do here. Yeah, and, and also I, 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 when I listen to her and I, I look at all these things, I, I also realize again the, the narrow perspective we have like from here, it's always the same, kind of more or less the same tradition, even though we try to be so open. So I guess that there, there will be, maybe it's, it's, it's okay that we have a little more time now to, to talk to her, to, to develop projects and ideas. Yeah, 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 because it probably just needs a little bit no, more time because we also have to get used to a lot of ideas. So there's a little bit more time. I think it's really helpful. Yeah, actually, since you say time, time is already yeah. running, and then I would I want to just t touch in one last thing before before um, we have to go out. Um, you both teach at universities. Thomas is teaching uh, music journalism uh, at uh, in Essen at the Folkwang University, and you Swanji uh, uh, aesthetic practice in Düsseldorf. Um, and you both try to incorporate uh, uh, your work as a curator for the festival in your work as the university professor. Is it, how, how would you see this uh, connection, if, uh, the possibility or the, the chances in this collaboration? 
Well, I think it's always interesting that, that that's the thing which I find super interesting when I'm teaching to have contact with people from a much younger generation now. They are most of them are between 20 and 25 and they bring in their perspectives on looking on music, but also on looking behind the whole belief system, the artistic, like, like textures of these people. So I learn a lot of their eyes and ears, how they reflect on that. And the idea from Mulheim was both the Institute for Pop Culture in, in Bochum, actually, but it's part of the Volkwang that the students are coming and just visiting the festival and we reflect that together in the, in the talks afterwards. But I also had a project planned and I still try to do something with Mulheim Triennale, with them, with the Heinrich Heine University in Düsseldorf, where I also teach. And the idea would have been that they visited the festival, that they do journalistic reports from the festival and we talk about them and maybe even do like a little magazine or a website project out of that. Because because especially with the artists we bring in here, these are a lot of them are like not the usual stuff my students are listening to, all of them. So I found it fascinating what they take from that. What is the interesting part from that? What do they think is the narrative they want to transport when they are working journalistic with that and then I re revisit their ideas and maybe I, I take stuff out for me and we as a festival take also a lot out of of having that co possibility room of seeing how they work with all that music and artistic ideas we're having there on the table. Yeah, take it, Svante. Yeah, yeah I, I, I also think it's like there is a wide range of possibilities to include students in in, uh, uh, in in different projects. I mean, since we shifted the, the dates now, there is more time to, <laughs> and some things that we ma might have planned are not, not get to be realized this year. But anyway, I think it's like, maybe the other point is also like that the Monheim Triennale, I mean, also because of you, uh, was is already a little bit of a community-based um festival and I think to to get uh, I mean I tried specifically this semester a lot with um, also the students from um, the Musico Schule the the music academy in Düsseldorf like to talk about the idea of community arts and and co music collectives and and the 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 question of of how and for whom do we do all this work I mean if it's it specifically if it's not like um, it, it might be also like positions like like Thomas said I thought that they might at least know some of the musicians but then on the other side they might just know none of them so it's like and, and you see that it's quite a specific field of, of music which is and and which also questions of how how can people be interested in this kind of music if they might be not uh, musically educated, but but also still interested in this kind of music, and and if they feel as part of a community, uh, and I think Moham is is such a good place for this, and this is also something that I try to work uh, with my students a lot uh, about this year. What's what's community arts, and what what do we do? I mean, like it's 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 something in a perspective which which will might might get more important in future as well but i think it's it's already really important yeah well there's a million more things to uh, to, to uh, talk about and there's a lot of topics we just uh, touched briefly but that's how it is because uh, time is running out thank you so much for being here uh, in this in this uh, little um, live stream tonight i think now after talking to you i get the feeling it's not so bad that we have this much more time to um, <laughs> to work, and and there's there's one thing, um, we are not not only inventing uh, this festival, but we are also discovering it in a way. So there's something where we we don't know, and we have to look at it. Oh, it's like this. Okay, I didn't know. So that's an interesting aspect too. We are also curious. Oh, we're very. I'm oh yes. Very, <laughs> yeah, and and the aspect with the community arts, of course, would be something. Anyway. Thank you very much, guys, for, for um, talking. You. and, and Thanks um, for having us.